Today's species spotlight is about what I would say the most iconic, if not the most common species of snake in the hobby and reptile trade. So obviously the Brazilian rainbow boa here. This is our adult male. He can theoretically get a little bit larger, but this is about as big as they get. Our female is a little bit smaller, a little bit more red, but we have him today. So these guys are really, really cool. There are nine different subspecies of the rainbow boas, and these ones specifically, the Brazilian rainbow boas, the most common in the trade, are found in the Amazon basin. So obviously Brazil, Brazilian, me. Um, and then, you know, further north into French Guiana, Suriname, Guyana, even in parts of Peru where they actually um, overlap range into the Peruvian rainbow boas, which look very similar, probably the most similar to the Brazilians. And there is probably a fair bit of confusion about where they come from and maybe or may not necessarily have as many pure lines of Brazilians and Peruvians as we would like to say there are. These guys are really cool. They're in that five to five and a half foot range. So they're much more manageable in size as compared to like the imperators and the constrictors who sometimes can get over eight to nine feet or more. Um, so they make a good size manageable pet, but they don't necessarily make the best pet. And I'll get into that in just a second. So if you were to go down to the Amazon rainforest and start trudging around, you would, you would find these guys on the ground in burrows, at the base of trees, under logs, and sometimes even in lower hanging branches. They are a little bit thinner bodied and they are found in trees sometimes, but usually not very, very high up, like um, some species of more arboreal snake, like the emerald tree boas or the Amazon tree boas. And even then the emeralds aren't that high up, but I digress. Um, the reason why that these guys aren't as prominent is for uh, several reasons. And that is because number one, they are not quite as prevalent. They weren't as exported as much as the imperators and constrictors were. Um, their care requirements are a little bit more difficult and more advanced, I should say, as well as because of that, they don't breed as readily in captivity. And so the reason why that I say that they are not the easiest one is because of their requirements. So down in the Amazon rainforest, yes, it is hot, it is humid, but there actually isn't that much temperature fluctuation. For the most part, year round, it stays between roughly 72 to 75 to 90 degrees, and that's about it. It never gets hotter than that, and it really doesn't get very cool. Obviously, there's a wet and dry season where the humidity spikes and goes up and down, but that's the range they need to stay in. And that 90 degree, they're not out. So usually in the low 70s to mid 80s, like 85, is about as warm as you want to get these guys. And they need humidity, high, high humidity. Like we all struggle with ball python. Well, I shouldn't say we all, but a lot of us struggle with ball pythons, just that 60 to 70%. That's what these guys need all of the time. And it's very difficult to get that in with that lower temp without that higher basking spot, as well as maintain that really, really high humidity. And so balancing that takes a little bit more of a skilled, trained um, learning curve that even I have struggled with at times. It takes, and it took me a while to figure it out, which is why our Brazilian rainbow bows are actually housed in a different building than the main snake room here at lower temps that we can more monitor their hot spots so that way it's a little bit easier for them to thermorelate for their temperature and humidity needs. With that being said, these guys are, these guys are really cool. So as I said before, they can make a really good pet. They're fairly docile. They're not super reactive, obviously as babies they are, but as they get older and usually about the size, they're about the time they're about a year old, they really start to calm down, really mellow out and are very tolerant to a lot of handling. Um, they are all, as far as the Brazilians go, this kind of orange to sometimes dark red. Um, the female, as I mentioned earlier, is much more dark red. She looks a little bit um, more defined. So they all have that base that orange red base sometimes that town that tan brown siding which looks very much like a another boa that i'll talk about in a second um, with these kind of bull's eyes that they have along their back and with like the more red ones like our female it's much more distinctive where it's more like black orange red with the cool little rings but with that being said now we've had them in captivity enough to where there are a few morphs like the colombian rainbow boas the ones that actually reach into Central America, the farthest north ones, they have more uh, morphs than we normally have seen. But these guys, there are starting to be a few pattern and color morphs, including albino and this other really cool one called bullseye and another one where it almost looks like chain link instead of these independent circles. They're all kind of combined. They look really, really cool. These guys are an amazing species to keep and it'd be really cool to eventually produce them. But obviously our female has a couple years to get going. Um, I would recommend something like a four by two enclosure for these guys, give them some room to climb, 
Basking spots, you know, it's not as great. You don't need super high, high levels of heat, obviously, but you get a good UVB light in there and it can really show off their iridescence. The reason why that snakes in general, but like these guys all iridescent is because they, in their skin and in their colors, regardless of which kind it is, some snakes just have it more than others, they have a particular type of skin cell called an iridophore. And that iridophore essentially acts with sunlight to create that reflective iridescence. And so Brazilian rainbow boas, Mexican burring pythons, and then even some of the darker morphs like the IMG boas and the golden child retics, they all have a higher concentration of those iridophores, which is really kind of a dumbed down version of how this all works for them, makes that really shining iridescence. So if you put a good UVB bulb, a lower wattage one, it can really shine and show off this amazing, brilliant iridescence. Um, just remember again, keep them cool. Don't give them huge meals because just like the Imperators, they have a slower metabolism where you can't just pound them with food all the time. It leads to a lot of complications. And as a final little fun fact about these guys is remember what I said about their cool side pattern like that where it looks very familiar? These guys are actually in, you know, the chain of evolution more commonly and close, commonly, more closely related to the green and yellow anacondas than they are to the imperators and the constrictors that share their range. These guys are definitely, and if you would look at their head, you can tell just by the shape of their head, if you look at a lot of pictures of like the greens and the yellow anacondas, it, a lot of those features are very common. Only difference is these guys aren't really water pythons. And in fact, um, they having that really, really high humidity in those things can lead to stagnation that can lead to very easy skin and eye infections. And that is actually the leading cause of issues with these guys. And so that's why I say, um, in previous videos, I've talked about like the aquarium style setup where you get your setup running for a little while before you put them in there. Something like this is something that I would definitely recommend doing that where you have your setup and you can monitor the humidity and temps for a week or two before you actually put the animal in there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I don't talk about these guys a whole lot, mostly because they're in a different building. And so um, I have to bring the whole setup and the lighting is a little bit more difficult in there. So bringing him over is a real treat for me, as well as I actually haven't had them out of quarantine nearly as long. So I haven't gotten to interact with them a whole lot. So just the prep and coming into this and setting this up was really fun to play with him, um, as well as his little future girlfriend. But we decided to go with him in the end. But that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about rainbow boas, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I do not have as much experience with rainbow boas as other people. There are a lot of other people I know that work very well, like Rainbows Are Us. Um, there is a local breeder in Colorado called High Streets Exotics that they have done some things with rainbow boas. They're really cool. But if any other questions, please let me know. Hope you guys are having a great day. If you can, please click the link down below for US ARC. Um, that's the United States Association of Reptile Keepers. They are defending our rights to be able to keep animals like this guy right here for us just around the country. And they could really use our help right now. So if you have time and even if you have a little bit extra um, your way, I know things are really messed up right now. So I know asking out for you know cash donations and things like that is a little bit difficult. But if you can, please go check them out and just read what they are doing right now because they could really use all of our help right now. Hope you guys are having a great day. And we... We'll check you next time.